and Allie with Potomac Beads. Join me in making this Nordic Christmas ball cover. Featuring some of the newer products from 2020, the quad bow as well as the 8mm Potomac Crystal Rivoli. Join me as we create this one-of-a-kind Christmas ornament. So we're going to begin on four separate components. The components are going to consist here of different colors, or you can do them all in the same color. If you don't want to have the multiple colors um, as the option, you can match them to your ball. You can change up the design a little bit at the connection as well. We're going to begin with Hubble stitch. So if you've seen the uh, St. George cross, we are doing the same as the St. George cross, but we're just altering it just a little bit. I have three beads on one piece of .006 wildfire beading thread with a stop bead on a size 12 needle. There's about three feet of beading thread and I'm going to sew back through bead number one. From here I need to make another green cross, little section here with my icicle hanging down, and I'm going to add three beads at the top of my Hubble stitch unit. Coming out of bead number one, I'm going to sew down bead number two to complete that first Hubble unit. From here, I add three more beads, push them down toward the last unit, sew up through bead number one, starting from the last unit, sewing toward bead number two in that group of three. And then once I'm through bead number one there, I'm going to add three more of my 11 O's in the silver lined green color and come down through my second bead in that white 8 C bead. My white seed beads are the opaque white luster in the Toho brand. I'm going to repeat this six more times till I have a total of eight of my little Hubble stitch units. After you have your eight Hubble stitch units, and it's going to look a little bit messy up and down here, we are going to connect the two together. So coming out of your second bead in unit number eight, we're going to go back into the first bead here of unit number one. So to do so, we're going to start at that stop bead there and then go right in to that first bead and up toward our grouping of three. Move that stop bead out of the way just ever so slightly. From here, I want to go back into bead number two of that first Hubble stitch unit, and we want to come out our base bead or our third bead in our unit. And down here, see how it kind of sits as a jumbled mess? We're going to go through that first bead there. So it's going to sit opposite of those three beads. From here, move that stop bead just ever so slightly out of the way. We're going to grab on to all of these bottom beads. So the beads that sit directly below your grouping of three green beads, I'm sewing right down in the line, right around in the circle. You did eight units, so you're going to catch on eight beads. If the green beads are towards the bottom, just go in and flip them so they go toward the top. Continue on then, sewing through all of those bottom beads. When you sew through all of the bottom beads then, it will sit in a little bit of a circle. I'm going to sew back through my first bead that my thread was going through, as well as the second 8 there, and pull that into a nice little almost snowflake circle. From here, in between each one of my eight beads that I just joined, I'm going to add one more 11 O seed bead. The reason I'm adding them now versus between just this last section is I want them actually to sit a little bit above the thread line. You're going to add one bead, sew in to your next 8 O. Add another bead, sew in to the next 8 O seed bead. Continue this a total of eight times, sewing in, and then what we're going to do is progress after these eight seed beads go in to some 15 O seed beads. The 15 O seed beads that I'll be using are the Duracoat Galvanized Gold, and that is in the Miyuki brand. 
So once you have these on here, and again, you can switch up and do this whole unit in greens or reds, or even do it mixed together that you have green and red in that rotation of three. And once you have the final eighth bead in here, what I want you to do is sew through that first green bead that you added and out. So there you have that little section. Again, really cute, simple earring. What we're gonna do now is go back through all of the green beads in a circular fashion, adding three 15s onto our needle and picking up the next green bead. Again, three beads go onto the needle, go through the next green bead. I'm gonna continue this again through every single green bead till I have all eight with those groupings of three around. When you're adding your final three beads, you're going to want to get to the top of the first grouping of three to that middle bead, that second bead in. So I sewed back through my green bead there and then up through the first two 15 O's. As I sew through now, what I'm going to do is catch on to all of these little points. I'm gonna create a square by catching on to every other point in those groupings of three. So I'm gonna, coming out of group number one, I'm gonna skip group number two and go into group number three. Add six seed beads of your 15 O's, skip over that next little point, and go into the third point in line just through that center bead of that point. This is going to get ready to encapsulate either my emerald or my light cyan eight millimeter Rivoli. Again, six beads go on, skip over the next grouping and go into the following, just that center bead. This is netting that we're doing right now. Six more beads go on, skip over that next group of three and go into the one after, just to the middle bead, bead number two. As I add my last group of six, I wanna have my Rivoli ready, and I'm gonna go through that first bead that my thread was originally coming out of there. And before I pull nice and tight, I'm gonna drop my little Rivoli in place. Then I'm gonna pull nice and tight. I'm gonna sew through all of my group of six beads. So this time I'm gonna just go through, not adding any beads, all six beads. So I'm not sewing through the corner bead at all, which is gonna be that bead from the netting. I'm just going through those six corners. You can see those six beads and then on to the next. That's gonna create this corner effect and also pull these in so that way my eight millimeter Rivoli will not escape. If you happen to sew through that little corner bead from the netting, just unsew through it and on to the next group of six. So I've sewn through all four groups of six and managed to catch one of my other needles as I was doing it here. Get that needle out from the last one. And after you go through those, you're gonna wanna go through whichever one you started with one more time, because that helps to get it really closed up and finish up that square. Finishing up that square then, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down and catch on the other four little peaks because there were a total of eight. I'm going to sew it down through that corner bead that sits on below. So down through that corner 15 that we caught onto when we added our six, down through the 15 0 next to it. And then I'm gonna go through the 11 0 the green one right after and up through the two beads of the 15s that are next in line, those open two 15s. As I come out those open two 15s with my needle and thread, I'm going to then get ready to count seven beads and catch on to the four corners that I have not attached to yet. Once you have seven beads on your needle, you're gonna sew over 
to the next little picot trim there with that group of three and sew through that bead. That's going to make that really framed out section that sits in the middle of the design. After doing this one side, I'm going to continue on and do the next three sides. As you add your final seven beads here, you're sewing back through that first 15-0 from the first picot trim that your thread was coming out of. And that creates that nice little closed-in captured crystal. This also makes a great set of earrings just to add a little wire guard at one of your peaks. To proceed on, what I'm going to do is go through the next 15-0 in my bottom line there of my picot trim. So I'm going to sew through the next 15-0 and also down through the 11 and then also through the 8. That's going to bring me out towards the interior of my project. And what we're going to do now is sew up to the top of one of your green little peaks on the exterior of your Hubble stitch. I'm going to look on my thread where I'm coming out of right here and I'm going to sew up through my next 8-0. As I sew up through the next 8-0 in that Hubble stitch one that I'm on, I'm going to sew up to the peak of my 11 O's on the exterior corner. When we come out that peak, we are going to start to add our quad bow beads. So our quad bow beads are a four hold bead. These are a Potomac exclusive. And we're gonna be using four per section of our design. I'm using the white shimmer color. And when exiting out my 11 O there in that Pico trim, I'm gonna add one more 11, sew up through one of the center two beads out of those four of the quad bow. Coming out the top, add one more 11, one two millimeter crystal, and one more 11. When I'm using the green seed beads, I'm using the Garnet AB two millimeter bicone. When I'm using the red, I'm using the Emerald AB two millimeter. From here, coming out the third hole of my quad bow, I'm gonna add one more 11 and then sew through that same second bead in that Pico trim that my thread was coming out of. Two more 11 OC beads go on, and I'm gonna sew through the first hole of the quad bow bead. When I come out that first hole, I'm gonna add two more beads, and then sew through the three beads that are already at the top of the bow. And I like the green color with the red crystals because it really starts to look like garland and berries. Dump out a couple more. So if you had to pick one color and you didn't want to do both the red and the green, I'd go with the green. When I am doing the red color, the red seed bead color that I'm using is the silver lined ruby. Coming out the top then, three beads, add two more 11 O's and sew down through hole number four of the quad bow. Exiting the quad bow, add two more 11s and sew in again to that middle Pico trim bead. What I'm gonna do now is get to my third little peak there. So I'm coming out of peak number one, skipping peak number two and going to peak number three. To do so, I'm gonna go down bead number three of that Pico trim that I'm coming out of, as well as down through the white 80 right below. Coming out the white 80, go into the next 80 and up through the next Hubble stitch. Skip over the C beads and go down through the next bead and then up through the following one. So you're just skirting down, up and down through the 80 C beads till you get to your next section. So up through bead number one and two and then repeat. So we're gonna repeat going in and doing my next three sides of my quad bow bead in the same fashion. After you finish with your last side of your quad bow, I want you to go through that last 8 or that last 11 rather, and down through the 8 And now what we're gonna do is come out through that corner 11 which we're gonna go up through the eight, and then through those two corner beads. So we're coming out that corner 80. We're gonna come out the corner 80 and start to add one of our two millimeter bead and one of our 15 OC bead. 
I want you to go through the quad bow, go through all the seed beads, and then down through that first hole of that quad bow. When you're down through the first hole of the quad bow coming out, you're going to exit and add 115 and one of your crystals. So through that corner peak right there of the 11L, reverse it, adding a 2 millimeter and a 15 l back up through the next quad bow. You're going to do this for three sides, and on the fourth side, we're going to add our little icicle, which is going to be one of our long feather beads. Coming out here, I'm going to show you how we're going to add that. Adding a 15 crystal, 15, or sorry, 15 and a crystal through the 11, and then reverse that crystal 15. Coming out the end then of the quad bow, I want you to sew through the first two beads and exit. From here, we're going to pick up our white elongated feathers there, and we're going to add two green 11s, two 15s, and our feather. The feather has a tiny bit of a curve if you're using a briolette or a crystal drop, which would also look great, uh, or just making a drop out of your butt crystal bicones. You'll have those on there. I'm going to add two more 15s after, two more 11s, and then again into beads right there, one and two at the end. And that hangs that little icicle down. You want to make sure if you are using the curved feathers that they are curving the correct direction. From here, back through my quad bow and out. 15 crystal through that corner bead. You can pull it up if you need to. And just through that middle bead. Once you're through there then, you're going to add crystal 15 and back over to the starter side. You're going to make a total of four of these if you're using a two and a half inch Christmas ball. You may need to make a fifth or you may need to make less if you have a smaller ball. So keep that in mind as you are designing. I'm making these as independent units rather than sewing them together because there is such a variety of sizes when it comes to Christmas balls or Christmas baubles that you're going to attach this onto. After you do your last section there, go ahead and bring your needle and thread in towards the interior of the design through the 11, through the 8, and you should come out right about where that stop thread is, that starter thread, and you're going to simply tie those two thread ends together to end your thread. If you have a ton of thread left on your needle, you may want to keep that needle attached. So I had one here that I finished up that I had a fair amount of thread left on the needle. I kept that attached so that way I already have a thread there when I go in to do my connection points and add these together. After finishing your four sections of your Nordic crosses here, what we're going to do is sit those off to the side and we're going to start to build on to our ball, connecting those together as well as making it so that it kind of fits like a little vest right over the top here. Now I have made a loop here that's going to fit over top of the ball once I take this little edging off. It just simply comes off and is usually on there by wire. I have to begin with mine four, or sorry, 16 of my crystals that have 16 of my 11 OC beads in between each. We're going to be looking at this eventually as four quadrants and it is going to be four quadrants of four crystals. To add a little bit of a little fun loop idea to it and to make it so it's not so heavy along the sides and to mirror, we're going to pick up some 15 OC beads to create a little bit of a collar, kind of a lacy collar here. 
So coming off and tying that into a knot, I'm coming out one of my 11 OC beads and I want to add one, two, three, and four, and five of my 15 O's. I'm going to sew then into the next eight OC bead and out. Those five beads will just kind of decorate and hang down right there after the crystal. One, two, three, four, five, on to the next one. So you have 16 of your white beads on here. You're going to end up with 16 of these little ruffles on the exterior of the crystals. After you have your little color here that's going on the ball top there, also this is a cute idea for just a really, really simple design idea. And then you can just hang little fringe down along all the sides. We made 16 of our little peaks or our little collars here. I'm going to catch on to every fourth one here and add one of these long feather drops in between. To come out, what I want to do is come out one of those peaks, so that third bead there, and whichever way your thread is coming out, that's the way that we're going to go around the design here. I have on my design five 15 O's, one eight, two 15's, one eight, two 15's, and then I did the same exact thing. When stringing, you want to make sure that your feather is sitting so that it's going to lay nicely along the Christmas ball. From here, keep three points open, one, two, three, and sew into the next fourth point. When you sew into that fourth point then, that design is just gonna kind of hang around the side of the piece. I'm gonna repeat the same exact thing three more times till I have four of my little feather groupings there. Coming out that center bead, adding my beads, and then skipping one, two, three peaks, and sewing into the center bead of the fourth. Once you're done with the little ball topper section, what we're gonna be doing is connecting on to our innermost towards our uh, V's there, our innermost 8O C beads. So I'm gonna sew over through all of these 15's again, through the 8's, through the long feather, and when I'm over here, now you can do this all off the ball too. If your ball does vary in size, I would say and suggest doing this on the ball so you make sure the fit is accurate. And you're gonna sew over to those eight O's and out. Once you're out the eight O's, this is gonna be between the feathers. We're gonna get ready to sew in and sew on our crosses. So I've gone ahead and sewed on one of my little crosses there, and you can see I'm coming out that 8O that's closest. I'm gonna grab five of my 15 O's. And then if you're alternating colors, you wanna make sure that you pick up the alternative color. And I'm gonna pick up my alternative color, Nordic cross here, and some of them might have threads still connected and a couple needles, don't worry about that. I wanna make sure that it's gonna lay against the ornament here. I'm going to go to the top of the piece and sew my thread and needle through the crystal that sits at the very top of the cross. Once you're through that crystal that sits at the top of the cross, you're going to add again five more seed beads. And once you have those five seed beads on, so into the next 8 OC bead. You can also, if you want to, sew across them in through all of those seed beads there, straight across through to the feather, and you'll see how these are starting to hang along the sides of my ornament. Coming out then the next one, you're going to come out that second 8 OC bead, and once I'm out that second 8 OC bead, I'm going to get ready to add my next red cross. Again, just like we've been doing, three of, or sorry, five of our 15 O's. Our cross goes on, five more 15 O's. I'm going to continue till I have all five of my, or four of my crosses onto my form, and then we're going to get ready to attach the crosses in the center of them in that center section. Once you have all your Nordic crosses here on the sides of your bead, 
or on your ball, you can see kind of how nice it looks from the top down. What I'm gonna do is finish off my thread and needle by going back to that starter row. So I'm coming off here, I'm going to zigzag through around the starter row, tie those two off, and the second piece of green thread will be done. Then on your crosses, you may still have some needle and thread hanging out because we're gonna utilize those as we go through here and connect our crosses along the side. So on each one of my crosses here, I'm going to be connecting them here with a little bit of a swag. For most of my crosses, I have some thread that's left. I've taken this off the ball just so it's a little bit easier to hold, but I wanna put it on the ball so you can see how this is hanging. So you can see once I put it on the ball here, you have almost those little strips of garland that are hanging connecting one of the crosses from one to the other. So right there. So what I need to do is for most of my crosses, I'm going to actually have the opportunity to have thread already on. If not, you can attach thread if you need to. But what I'm going to do is for most of my thread and needles, I have them hanging out here on the side of my pieces. I'm taking them over to one of my crystal edges, going through just my stitch here, and my stop bead is still on there. Going out towards my outer edge, sneaking between all of the beads here. And I wanna get out and down the row of seed beads here along the side. So I'm gonna go up through my beads here along the side, making sure that I'm not seeing any extra thread and to do so, I'm sewing the same thread path that I would have on my piece. Coming through here then, I'm coming out through that center X right there, right there. And like I said, you can add thread if you need to. I'm gonna go up through one of my interior holes of my quad bows. I'm gonna come down through the seed beads along the side And when I come down the seed beads along the side here, I'm gonna flip this piece over here, coming down through the seed beads along the side, which because of the way that my thread is coming out, I'm gonna go into those three seed beads that sit towards the middle of your cross, through the crystal, and then down through the 11 O's towards the bottom. When I'm coming out the bottom, of this seed bead row, I'm going to add 25 15 O's to my needle. And then once I have those on, we're going to connect to the other side. Now, obviously, if you want this to be blingy, you can add some crystals in here. You can add some 8 seed beads. I just wanted the gold to be my primary color. I'm gonna go over to the next cross in my design. Here, so you can see, it kinda of looks like a little bit of a mess here. And what I'm going to do is sew up through those beads as well, and out through. So I'm sewing up through the beads here, and I'm gonna sew out right after the three 11 seed beads. That's gonna link these two sides together with that little swag. From here, I'm gonna add eight more 15s. One of my 8 OC beads. Eight more 15s. And once I have those eight 15s on, I'm gonna go right into the other side and sew down the three seed beads and exit right where my swag started. You can see then, it's gonna appear that that top one is a little bit too long because of the way that we're sitting on the ball. From here, I'm gonna take my thread and needle through my project toward the back of my cross, remove my stop bead, and tie these two thread ends together. I have one more connection point to do and after that connection point then, I'll burn off all of these little thread ends that are left. Once you're done all your connection points, you get the honor of sticking it back on the Christmas ball. 
and then to have it stay on here, just take your topper, put it back on, and that finishes off the whole end of the ball. Now obviously there's tons of variations that can be done in the way that it connects in the number of beads that you do on the side. And you can really change up this design when you're looking at the ball. So you can see how cool it is hanging on the tree. Those little long feathers hang perfectly along the side of the bead and it should be your ornament for 2020. Brighten up somebody's day and give them a beaded ornament. Hopefully, even if you don't do the same exact idea and design, it gives you a design idea to take and to make lots and lots, whether or not it's just that collar along the top, some crystals hanging down, or even making the St. George pendant into a fun Christmas ornament cover. As always, if you need any materials, you can check out the links below the video to shop with us online at potomacbeads.com as well as potomacbeads.eu. Also, don't forget if you haven't yet to subscribe to get regular updates from us here at Potomac Beads. When you subscribe, it helps to build this community so more people view this awesome craft and see the designs and the inspiration that we come up with in this amazing, amazing group that we formed. Remember, if you are making Christmas ball covers, Post pictures of yours in our Facebook group for beading and jewelry making. As always, you can comment below too with any changes, questions, variations that you may have come along the way. As always, thank you so much. Happy holidays and enjoy your new Nordic Christmas ball cover.